Free as in content, not free as in beer. Originally published August 15th, 2024 by Paul O'Flaherty on pauloflaherty.com. A while back, I wrote a post defending companies who detect the use of ad blockers to prevent people who are using them from viewing content. This stemmed from a privacy complaint made to the Irish police on Garda Síochána that detecting ad blockers was spyware. Over on YouTube, user Hikari Unmai left me a very lengthy and well thought out post and I'd like to address some of their points in the comment. I'll quote Hikari here, but for the sake of brevity, it's not the entire comment. The full text is available on the YouTube episode. But I think you missed the point of the complaint. The problem with ads is that they track our activity to personalize them and they have a better chance to get a sale. The downside is that all that information about us is, was, not regulated, and US companies keep them indefinitely, while in the EU we have the right to be forgotten, and countries like mine even force any business to delete all personal information after six months, unless the person consents to give it for longer. Take off the tracking part and the EU will leave you alone. As a person who happens to be European, but have lived in another continent too, I'm not being unreasonable by putting my privacy over your entertainment being free. If that's the issue, ask US companies to cut off services in the EU, or at least develop two separate business models. One for US citizens who prefer to pay in privacy and risk security breaches, and one for EU citizens who don't like companies keeping tabs on our every last movement." Where do I begin? As a fellow European born and raised in Ireland, I fully agree with the need and desire for privacy. Everyone's privacy and data is sacred and should be protected at all costs. I have ridiculously European sensibilities on this, but I'm also a realist. As someone who has created content in one form or another for the better part of two and a half decades, it's painfully obvious that the economics of content creation and distribution are being overlooked or willfully ignored in the discussion around ad blockers. Privacy is paramount, but goodwill won't pay content creators. Dumb, untargeted advertising won't generate enough revenue to pay content creators. Dumb, untargeted ads don't make money, because advertisers need to be sure they are reaching the right audience. I'd be surprised if you could even sell such advertising en masse anymore, unless it's local advertising in a very local niche. For example, a store in your small town on a website aimed specifically at your small town. The money has to come from somewhere. A balance has to be struck because the situation isn't black or white or either or. Ad blockers affect far more than just the ability to monetize content. They affect the process of content creation. They typically don't just block ads, but block the data and analytics collection that lets me know what type of user is watching the content I create. If I know nothing about who is listening to my podcast, watching my videos, or reading my posts, how can I effectively create content for them? Are they men or women? Should I be writing in British English or American English? Do more women than men watch after the 1 minute 30 second mark? There is a balance to be struck between privacy and monetization. Business models that allow a content creator to get paid that aren't a subscription model, either directly or through something like Patreon, or an advertising model, don't exist. Not at the level where they are effective on a large scale. If there are, I would love to hear about them, because that person should be a billionaire for fixing this problem. The only way to distribute content for end users at scale with almost zero privacy infringements, is not to offer the content to anyone who doesn't pay up front. And that hurts everybody. Nobody gets free stuff. Advertisers and small businesses lose out. Content creators lose discoverability on platforms. And they incur prohibitive distribution costs if they are discovered after trying to do it without the resources of an established platform. We are not that far removed from the days when content creators would incur massive bandwidth bills from their hosts when something blew up. Third-party platforms like YouTube insulate creators from such risk. In 2009, when YouTube was only a minuscule fraction of the size it is today, it cost $700 million to run the platform, and it's just one platform. In 2023, YouTube served 2.7 billion users, but had only 100 million 
paying users. In other words, for every user that is willing to pay or can afford to pay for ad-free content, there are 26 that cannot or will not yet still consume the content. And those paying users are not just getting ad-free YouTube. They're getting YouTube music and other freebies for the price. The incentive to subscribe is far more than just watching creator content without enduring ads for Chewy. If YouTube, which is just one of many creator platforms, was to disappear tomorrow, what chance would a small self-hosted creator have given the myriad costs and lack of efficiencies of scale? YouTube is just one of many, many platforms. And don't get me started on paywalls. Even if I give away access to my content for free, paywalls essentially make me undiscoverable without incurring large marketing and labor costs. This makes my content inaccessible to many and reduces my ability to create content. If you tell me that I can't detect if someone is accessing my content on my site in a manner which I deem to be theft, that I have to allow it to happen or damage my own discoverability and ability to earn income? No thanks, I'll just stop creating because the ROI isn't there. Take this post as an example. So far I have written about 1300 words this morning and that took me a few hours. Someone, my long suffering girlfriend with her English degree, will edit it because I suck at typing and spelling. Tomorrow I will spend time creating graphics for it using a service I pay for, recording it with the equipment I bought, editing it with the software I paid for, uploading it to the website I pay for, to the podcast host I paid for, then spend time distributing it and promoting it at merit. I only do it for reputation, but many people make a living from it. Many rely on what they earn to pay their bills and employ teams of people to create the content you watch for free. If content creators can't get paid because they can't make money, even though their content is good, most of them will stop creating content. We have to find a balance. We have to give a little to get a little. We just have to find the right balance and turning the tap off at either end solves nothing. Let's get one thing straight here. Accessing content that requires you to pay for it without doing so is theft, plain and simple. There are essentially two ways to pay for content online. Watch the ad or pay for a subscription. If you fail to do either, then you are robbing the creator and the platform. Unless, like me, the content creator specifically puts out their content for free. Free as in beer. Yes, privacy matters and is extremely important. It's important to me as a creator and as a consumer. Consenting to have your data used is vitally important in online tracking, but you as a consumer aren't the only one with a right to consent. Consent in creator content is just like sexual consent. The content I create is like my genitals, and I have every right to stop you looking at them or touching them. If you enter my home or see me outside and try to touch my genitals, I have every right to know who you are and to take every means to stop you from touching them if you don't agree to my conditions that allow you to do so. Keep your thieving hands off my nuts. They're paid to play. Hi, this is Paulo Flaherty, and I want to thank you for checking out my podcast. If you liked this episode, please share it with a friend. It's the best way to support what I do. Also, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your podcast platform of choice. Thanks again for listening.